health services are not where we would want them to be in the future. The, the, the trick here is to, I think, is to allow those STPs to be developed and for those STPs to be brought here so the board is assured that each of these areas on page 16, children and young people, perinatal uh, uh, mental health services, <coughs> Response to the question about is there more money? Um, the CCG has received some, uh, ha had an understanding that it would receive um, some resource for CAM services next year, and that came out with a fanfare of additional monies being made available for CAM services, and indeed it is, but I now understand that that's in my baseline allocation. So it's not additional resource, <coughs> but it's actually included. Says, because every time I meet with, with governors of CWP, you get a presentation from Phil Wells, Tim Murphy, the finance director. We always talk about the deflator, so that there was savings to be made, and then we look for where there might be a way of restoring those or doing new things a different way. So I'm particularly interested in this <coughs> issue of access to psychological and talking therapies, because I need to understand how, as we talked about training early on, how people are trained into that and what the pipeline of people in training is so that it can be delivered. Because you can't magic people overnight to do something unless they've been through a program. Uh, and I'm not sure where all that training is, that apart from CDP, there's a lot of internal training uh, that tells you Paul. So we need to know, understand how that's funded and what the numbers coming through are so that the service can be improved for those people who've come through the training. I think the bright spot is the new building for CAMS at Chester on, on the, the site there. So it's in process of build with beautiful outlook and large rooms for teenagers, uh, the sort of ideal setting, um, which did feature on one of the news night and television news programs recently mm -hmm. in the process of build. So the bright spot in doing that. I always look at it as someone um, from a family where my mother was bipolar and where my brother committed suicide. So I follow the issue of suicide in detail. And therefore I'm not going to go into it because otherwise I get all wound up in it, bound up in it, and think about what, what is different from what happened 25, 30 years ago and what progress have we made. Uh, and the role for the board, um, talking to people or publicising things, it's always it's a challenge stigma, I think. Because we want parity of esteem for mental health services. So that you know, just as something that people are prepared to talk about and recognise and think through. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, I'm, if I go into more detail, I'll be in trouble. So I'll mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. 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 sorry, yeah. just to help with yeah. some of the answers. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, <coughs> you know, we, uh, we, we talk about the, you know, the government's business, but what, one of the things from the training point of view, yeah. so, so when you talk about AYA, uh, or, you know, like early intervention in psychosis, the, um, the, the training, which, which more or less being funded by NHS England. So there is money, uh, they're not giving you cash, but what they're doing is they're, they're sending us on, on you know, training kind of schemes, and they're saying there'll be money for backflip. So there is some kind of good news there. Um, they're not so good, well, it's a good news and not so good news in terms of they won't count anything as being done unless it's been done by a, a trained uh, psychologist. So therefore, uh, you know, we might, we, we might still lag behind in terms of the timing before we get to the numbers we want. Um, the second thing which you mentioned, uh, John, in relation to the, uh, you know, these targets, so for instance, in psychosis, we don't want the target to be, you know, about 50%. Not because we don't want to see people within two weeks, it's because we, we don't want to overdiagnose people. Mm -hmm. uh, because you have, like, w when we start looking at the new uh, target, more than 50% of the caseload are going to be at this mental state. Uh, and what the government doesn't want us to do is to actually start giving all of these guys uh, diagnosis of mm -hmm. psychosis and then count them, because otherwise we can get to 100% by tomorrow. Uh, that's not difficult. It's the main thing is to actually see the right people, and that's why they kept it at 50%. The other good news on the world, from the psychosis point of view, we are actually one of the best trust. So, so from doing, you know, from actually achieving that target, it's uh, you know we're not too bad. That was okay. Good.
Can I, can I, Phil, Phil, can I just very quickly yeah. answer? Yes, I mean, this is a very quick one. On the, on the training, it, 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 it depends on, on what level you're at. Remember, I was trained in, in, in one year on CBT, um, which is usually a two year course, so it does take a little bit of time, and it is quite expensive to do in that. I, I'd like to focus us on what, how we take this um, agenda forward, yeah. and what's the answer to that, Ben? <laughs> 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 um, I think your suggestion, the first suggestion, was very I, good. So, uh, well, I, I think it's, it, it, it's interesting just listening to the conversation. There is a danger we revert to talking about services when there is a big plank about this and that and good health in communities okay. with the mental health as well. So we mustn't just, yeah. it's a very important part of it, but we mustn't uh, <coughs> just, just look at one or two aspects of this. The, the expectation here is that it will be connected to the system and mm -hmm. to say that mm -hmm. it has to be mm -hmm. that's clearly been yeah. here, so mm -hmm. absolutely accept that. But there is also an expectation and a requirement for us to publish a mental health prevention plan. And I think we do need to do some work because you are very and Deb is going to be right, John, we, we know a lot of things about some aspects of mental health, but there are some areas where I don't think we collectively understand the issues and how it plays out. And if we're thinking about that more holistic approach to, to mental health, I think there is some value in us doing um, a report which helps us tease out some of those key questions. What should be done at a local level? What should be done at a, a bigger system level? That goes into those uh, transformation plans. And if it's already there, that's where we just capture it as part of that report. We don't do something new because I, I, would, I would absolutely support that. But equally, I think there's a need for us to, to just check out and do almost like an audit of this, um, which I think is what Sheen's proposal was. And, um, I'd be happy to offer to work with Sheen and the mental health police from the CCC and, and train um, Jane Marshall and uh, perhaps Judy Webster and perhaps um, if you'd like to nominate somebody to Judy because I think it's uh, Judy's job and she has another gender is equally there and can trust. Yeah. I think there needs to be that thing just to do us a quick review, a quick and dirty review, bring it back and tell us where our key facts are. So that if we do to take some action by 2017, we're in a timely fashion to take that action, whether it be through that transformation plan or through something else. Mm -hmm. I think is where it's really going to do. That's my suggestion. That makes sense. Yes. Yeah. And I think if it's captured in that, what we agree for, what adults are saying and so on, I just think it's interesting. We've had 14 years forward to be uh, elected to the UK Youth Parliament in Wirral, and these are 12 year olds through to 17 year olds. And I've read all the manifestos and throughout all of them that they're concerned about mental health and I've summarised that they say things like making it less awkward to talk about mental health issues in schools is important. Many believe things have got worse with the explosion of social media, so it's not just pressure surrounding schoolwork and exams, but also peer pressure and cyber bullying. Okay, so we'll kind of set up this kind of subgroup to to take forward. Thanks, David. Um, to take forward this uh, piece of work in response to this report. Bring a report back, Bring a report back to, to to our next board. Yes, we both okay that. Very good. Right. Um, sorry, we we are um, running short of time here. So I'm going to ask R Richard if. if Richard, you could take us very briefly through, because you're down to do seven and eight. Yes, so, uh, so in terms of uh, the update report, uh, John's actually sold part of my funder anyway, so, uh, which I'm fine with, and he's so fine with it. Um, but, but obviously, clearly, SDPs are going to be sort of a really sort of key driver um, sort of going forward. Um, but, uh, for like the 16, 17, there is a requirement to achieve uh, sort of nine more students that are sort of set out in the bullet points there. I have to say some of those are extremely challenging in my view. It's been very, very difficult performance over the winter um, in a number of in a number of areas where Angle, for example, um, and ambulance rates at the moment particularly. Um, so I think these are going to be challenging, but clearly they're really important areas and I think we need to sort of galvanise effort in order to in order to achieve them. Um, the uh, I think obviously as John already said, the um, the 
obviously as a Cheshire myself, uh, sort of overarching activities and, and roles underneath that. Um, So I, I, I don't want to sort of you know to, to lay too long, but those are probably the sort of key points. Is is, is really the very challenging um, circumstances within health within the sort of health and social care system okay. at the moment. Can, can we just note note that up, okay. Yeah. Okay. So eight. Uh, and in terms of eight, I mean, I, I, I suspect Graham knows knows more about this thing than I do. And in, and clearly the, the sort of uh, um, transforming care in terms of Representing um, Liverpool City Regional Authorities on the Cheshire and Merseyside Partnership Board. <coughs> so um, uh, I, was, I was there earlier this week, um, and uh, the, uh, clearly uh, the key uh, sort of reason for that board to be in place is really to ensure the governance arrangements are in place, that uh, progress is being made. Uh, what I can say is that our local uh, group, our um, yeah, Cheshire group, is, is really proactive. And uh, working very hard in, in terms of uh, taking this forward. And again, um, we, you know, reports uh, can be brought here as, as necessary going forward. But uh, in essence, it, it does feel like there's a there's a strong framework, and that framework is very much based on uh, co-production. So I think uh, one of, one of the things I've seen in this, which feels quite new in NHS land, is that there are you know there's, there's a really good um, level of co-production in terms of the development of the plans and uh, people being engaged. Board that all as well in terms of decision making. Okay, great. Okay with that. Note that report. Brilliant. So that takes us then on to item nine, healthy will value proposition. John, you can do this. Uh, I'll be very brief, Phil, and me get into the time. Yeah. Uh, I've got another thing that I need to get to as well. Just so um, colleagues are aware, we have involved in a whole series of uh, engagement events during January and February. Um, we did take a presentation yesterday to the Public Scrutiny Committee, and the highlight of that um, would be uh, we, that we've held 30 workshops over that period. We've had uh, over a thousand responses in terms of online surveys. Uh, we've got 29,000 hits on our Facebook page now for Healthy World, which facilitates a conversation about what matters to you. So it goes through a series of questions and an online questionnaire. If you haven't done so, I'd encourage every member of the Health and Wellbeing Board uh, to do so. Um, and uh, 
some of the key themes that come out of that conversation um, have been quite surprising really to us, I think, and uh, almost allows us to be braver than that which we think we ought to be. Um, so um, the key themes have been uh, about confidence, and that's people wanting to take a greater role in their own health um, and have a greater confidence in determining what health means for them. Uh, and I think that's something we've always been afraid of, but I think there's an opportunity now uh, to do that. Um, also, uh, uh, wanting to have a confidence that the, the NHS will be there for them when they need it as well. I think that's uh, been a key theme. Um, absolute uh, theme about having a service which is joined up and is integrated. Um, and uh, that is a service which is completely uh, integrated between health and social care. Uh, and so sometimes we are a bit afraid of having that conversation. But again, people are saying, why aren't our services joined up? We've got one word up, what, what, what is the problem? Um, and so I, I think there's an open door there for us as well. Um, and the third theme is making best use of our community assets in terms of people in terms of resource, in terms of estate, and in terms of place. Um, and all those three themes, I think, feed into the Wirral 2020 delivery plan um, quite nicely around healthier lives, healthier high streets, our culture, our leisure strategy. Um, and I think the, the engagement that we've done serves for us to have the opportunity to, to carry on working in that way. Um, so uh, I think for today, that's all I'd, I'd like to say. Um, that I, I think facilitates the, the, the kind of context that we've written into our value proposition submission for next year. Because we're having, well, whilst we had one last year, we need to refresh it for this year. Um, and so we've done that, and we've taken these themes into the proposition, and we await a response from NHS England about how uh, that, we, that proposition has been received in terms of quality, in terms of being able to tell a story, and probably more importantly, but last of all, will they give us the money that we've asked for? Yeah, well, well, I'll wait to see. It's always it's a key question. Yeah. Give us the money. Uh, okay. Um, thanks, anybody? John. Thanks, John. Uh, any questions for John? No? Okay, thanks very much. And then finally, item 10, primary care committee. Request by NHS England for a member of the, this board to sit on the committee as a non-voting representative. Fiona. Thank you. I received this request to... Um, um, I have been having some correspondence with NHS to understand what they uh, need in terms of that sort of input. Um, they, the committee that's being set up um, is to help with co-commissioning, uh, primary care, um, and uh, it will be largely a lay membership, but there will be um, medics and PPG officers alongside NHS England there. Um, in discussion with the Wilson Talking Group and the people of the Strategic Home Affairs within the board, um, I've had a chat with those around the table who are not providers because I'm afraid it would be not really appropriate uh, for NHS and I think might be a member of the uh, commission but they're not participants in it anyway. Um, and I have a willing volunteer on my left. Always good to have a willing volunteer. This could be as good as you like.